Hi, it's Paul here from selfhelpforlife.com and in this video I'm going to talk about how to relieve anxiety quickly by dealing with the root causes. Now there's lots of information out there on how to reduce anxiety symptoms, things like mindfulness meditation, having relaxing baths, spa baths, massages, all those kind of nice things and they're all great to do. But they only really deal with the symptoms, not really with the root mental causes. So what I'm going to talk about in this video is actually how to deal with those mental causes. And there's a number of them. So the first one is imagining and thinking that things can go wrong. So if you think about it, to be anxious, you've actually got to imagine or think that something's going to go badly. It's going to go wrong in some way. If it's going to go normally or you think it's going to go well, then you're not going to feel anxious. You're more likely to feel confident instead. Um, so what I suggest you do is look back on past events, look at things that you were anxious about in the past, and then notice how they actually turned out. Now the reality is, generally, they probably turned out okay. Probably not brilliantly, although I expect sometimes they did, but generally just turned out okay. And then when you think about things that you're anxious in the future, think about how are they likely to turn out. The answer is probably going to be okay as well. And to give you an example of this, when I was uh, flying back from the UK, I was at Sydney Airport and I was waiting for my luggage. And um, I'd been waiting for a good sort of 10 or 15 minutes and most of the other people had got their bags at that point. And I started thinking, you know, I don't think my bag's going to turn up. You know, and then what if questions, well, what happens if my bag doesn't turn up? How am I going to deal with that? And then I sort of remembered a few things. I remember, well, I've probably been on about 70 flights now uh, over the last 20 years or so. And on every flight, the bags have always turned up. And so I then reminded myself of that fact. Well, that's the normal thing that happens, okay? And then I thought, well, if I keep thinking about the fact this bag's not gonna turn up, that's just gonna make me more anxious. So instead I just started thinking about the bag turning up. Um, and so for those next five to 10 minutes while I was waiting for the bag, I felt more comfortable, felt more relaxed. And of course, sure enough, the bag did show up, which was what I was expecting all along. So that's just a good example of um, just applying that, that thing in practice. So some other tips then. Um, spend time consciously focusing on how you would like something to go, even if you just want it to turn out okay. And a good time to do this is first thing in the morning when you get up. Another tip, when you feel anxious, when you notice that anxious feeling, notice what you're imagining or notice what you're saying to yourself. Then ask yourself, is thinking or imagining this going to make me feel any better? And questioning it like this is really powerful because it gets your mind to focus on the solution. Another one is imagine going 45 minutes into the successful completion of whatever it is you're worrying about. And just notice what you notice and notice how you feel when you do that. Another thing you can do is ask yourself, how likely is the worst case scenario? Now, if the worst case scenario is quite likely, then what you can do is make some plans to deal with it. So you've got like a contingency there. If it's highly unlikely, then it's much better to just drop focusing on it, just to focus on something else instead. Because remember that, you know, 95% of what you fear never happens or what you worry about never happens as well. So you just need to be able to sort of have this distinction in your mind really as to what is probable, what is likely to happen and what is possible, what could or may happen. So that's the first one. And that's, as I say, the first one's really about imagining things going okay or brilliantly rather than going wrong. So the second one is separating anxiety from your sense of identity. So I wonder if you've ever said these to yourself, I am an anxious person or I'm always anxious. And this is interesting because really anxiety is, is really something you do, it's not something you are. So I'm just going to repeat that. Anxiety is something you do, it's not something you are. It's a feeling, it's not part of your identity. And so here's some ideas to change this. Um, this is a great one from Bill O'Hanlon, who's a, a very successful hypnotherapist in the US. Um, he says, except when you are not. So just to, to give you an example of that, I'm always anxious, except when you are not. And let's face it, there are many times when you're not anxious. So again, it's not something you are, it's something you do. Another thing you can do is when you think about, I am an anxious person, is think about all the other things that you are as well. 
So I suspect you might be a, a parent, you might be a husband, a wife, um, you might be whatever your profession is, you know, a doctor, a dentist, a lawyer, um, a tradie, that sort of thing. Um, and then the other thing you can do is just change it to feel. So rather than saying, I am anxious, change it to what it really is, which is, I feel anxious, or I am feeling anxious. Okay. So these are little things just to <clears throat> notice in your thinking. Um, so just taking that anxiety from being something that is part of your identity to something that's more of a feeling, which when you think about it is the truth. Okay, so the third one is overthinking. <clears throat> it's pretty hard to be anxious if you don't overthink things. Those two really do go hand in hand. And overthinking doesn't necessarily have to be negative thinking. It can be the kind of planning type thinking, strategizing, weighing up options. However, if you keep thinking of the same things over and over again, you're gonna feel anxious. So I suppose the question is, how do you know when you're thinking the right amount to get something done and when you're overthinking something? So quite a good way to think of this is a useful amount of thinking will usually lead you to a decision or some kind of action to solve the problem, okay? An excessive amount of thinking will usually keep you stuck in the problem. So if you find you're just thinking the same things over and over again and you're not really taking any action or getting a solution, that's a clue that you're probably overthinking something. Okay, so some tips on that. Um, notice what if questions and answer them. So a lot of people, when they're overthinking, they, they come up with the what if questions, but they don't answer them. Um, so to give you an example of that, uh, let's say, what if I mess up my words in my presentation? All right, so what could happen? Well, some people could laugh. Some people might actually help you out because they're your friends and they actually want to encourage you. And some people may not even notice what's happened. Okay, so by answering those what if questions, you start to focus on solutions or contingencies. So, you know, if, if, if somebody does laugh, well then how would you deal with that? You can think about that scenario. And if people don't notice, then how would you deal with that? Okay, so that's one method. Another idea is to allocate a specific time to think or worry about situations. And at the end of this time, imagine putting those worries into little boxes and locking them. So you could have a separate box for work worries, another one for money worries, maybe a third one for relationship worries, or a fourth one for health worries. So just thinking about all the different parts of your life and having like a box for each. And this is a good exercise to do just before going to sleep as well. So if you find that these worries often keep you awake at night, just do this little visualisation as you're going to sleep of being in this really nice room with these little boxes. And just imagine putting these different thoughts and worries into these boxes, locking them, putting the key somewhere safe where there's no danger of those, uh, anything in those boxes coming out until the following morning. So maybe put the key under your pillow or something like that. So whatever works best for you. And then, if you do this during the day, when you, if you start worrying about things when it's not in your worry time, then just say to yourself, not right now, when these thoughts come up. So just say, not right now. And these thoughts will come up, and of course they will come up, you know, it's going to take a while for your brain to, to pick up on these. So, but that's a great thing to do as well. So the next one is dealing with uncertainty. Now we cannot 100% predict the result of anything that we do. And actually life would be quite boring if we did. Imagine going to a soccer or a rugby match, knowing exactly which team would win. That'd be quite boring. That'd be a bit like watching the match the following day on the TV when you already know what the result is. Or what about taking part in a competition when you knew you were gonna win, you had a 100% chance of winning. Now I don't know about you, but I don't think that feeling of winning would be quite the same if it was guaranteed. So uncertainty is actually a good thing. It's what makes life fun, enjoyable. And another thing I tend to think of is confidence as being the opposite of anxiety and uncertainty. So the world is uncertain, but we can always be confident in our ability to do our best. And that can just help us feel less anxious as well. And another tip is to focus on what's predictable and have more of a long-term focus as well. So if you eat the right foods consistently for a few months or a few years, then the chances are very predictable that you will have a healthy life. The same goes with mental health. You know, if you focus on being grateful and thinking positive and taking action on your goals and dreams, then in a few years time, you're likely to be more successful, happier than someone who doesn't do that, 
who's probably more inclined to then have kind of mental health issues later in life by not doing some of those things. So in the long term, results can actually be quite predictable. It's just in the short term when they tend to be more unpredictable. OK, so the next one is knowing what is within your control. So anxious people tend to worry a lot about things that are outside of their control. And this is especially true, again, as I mentioned earlier, when other people are involved. So just remembering we can influence others, but we cannot directly control them. So ask yourself, can I really control the outcome or can I only influence it? And finally, as I mentioned earlier, redefining confidence to being, you know, focusing on the things that you can control. So doing your best when that involves other people and then just being OK with whatever the outcome is in that situation. Just knowing that you've done your best. OK, so the next one is taking action. So thinking too much about something can lead you to overwhelm, indecision and procrastination. And a good thing to remember is that thinking is not doing. Okay, so thinking is not doing. So I encourage you to look at the situations that are making you anxious and ask yourself, what have I done in the last week to make this situation better or to deal with it better in some way? And if the answer is not a lot, then taking some kind of action, even if it's not the best option, will help you replace anxiety with that feeling of confidence. So if something seems overwhelming, Another great tip is just to break it down into steps and then make sure you take that first step today. You'll notice as soon as you take that first step how that anxiety feeling will start to wash away. OK, so the next one is focus on the external world and other people. This is really about getting out of your own head. So I found that anxiety tends to be an inside job. It's spending too much time thinking about your problem and being out of the moment, being not in the present. So what you can do is just become more aware of the external world. You know, when you're walking, just notice you know, the flowers in people's gardens, notice what other people are doing, just notice the weather. Just really notice what is happening around you. And also just be focused and be more grateful for the things that you do have. So just start focusing on that more as well. And start to notice you know, some of the problems that other people have and show empathy for them and help them if you can as well. And just noticing how you can help others, that will make you feel better. But really importantly, it just gets you out of your own head. So the next one is to focus on the skills, abilities and experiences that you do have. So people with anxiety tend to overestimate risk, overestimate the things that can go wrong, and they tend to underestimate what they can actually do about it. So think about the past anxious situations the ones that you've dealt with successfully and ask yourself, you know, how have I overcome similar, similar obstacles in the past? You know, where else in life have I used the skills, abilities and experience that I could use now? How have I handled these things in the past? You know, maybe you didn't handle them that uncomfortably, but focus on how you did handle them and then use some of those skills, abilities into this situation. The next one is perfectionism. Now look, it's natural to want to perform well and to the best of your ability and be as effective as you can. But could you be putting too much pressure on yourself? You know, being a perfectionist is vital in some occupations. You know, you'd want your brain surgeon to be a perfectionist. However, in many situations, being good and doing something to the best of your ability is more important than being an absolute perfectionist. I.e. it's more important to make progress and improve as you go along. You know, if you're a writer, you know, ask yourself, would it be better to have four books written that are 80% to your ability than have one book that is 100%? You know, how many more people would benefit from those four books that are 80% than the one book that's absolutely 100%? And also think about your things in life that don't have to be perfect. You know, things like housework don't have to be absolutely perfect. You know, it's not an all or nothing situation. Focus on the things that really need to be perfect, make them perfect, but on the things that can be just good, and good enough, then just make them that. Okay, so that will help you just reduce anxiety and stress generally. If, if you're the kind of person where everything in your life has to be absolutely perfect, then you are going to suffer from a high level, anxiety, a high level of anxiety. So the final one is to become an internal control freak. Trying to control everything externally 
in your life is just exhausting and it just isn't possible. And so this is really about just letting go of the things that you can't control. So instead, what would it be like to be an internal control freak instead? Now there's a number of uh, NLP, that's Neuro Linguistic Programming Techniques that can help you with this. So I'm just going to summarize a few of them now. So one of them is, if you're prone to a lot of internal self-talk, try turning down the volume of the self-talk. So just imagine the volume of this internal dialogue, just turning it down. Okay, that's a nice thing to do, just make it really quiet. The next thing you can do is change the tonality. Now often the sort of self-talk tends to become very authoritarian. I don't know whether it comes from sort of teachers at school or your parents, but it often comes across as very authoritarian. So what you can do is change that, make it sound maybe naughty instead. Uh, one I quite like is imagining it's a, a naughty French accent. So just imagine saying that thing, that thing that's bothering you, that thing that's making you anxious with a naughty French accent. Another thing you can do if you, more, if you tend to visualise things going wrong, then what you can do is make the images smaller and in black and white. So just trying that as well can really help. And another one um, is just watching your language. So looking out for non-choice words. So if you say things I should, I must, I have to, those kind of words, they seem to indicate that there's no choice. Okay. So changing them to things like, well, I could, I could choose to, that's just giving that element of choice. And usually, if you think about these situations, usually there is an element of choice anyway. Okay. So that can really help as well. So there are my um, strategies for helping you have less anxiety in your life by dealing with the root causes. There was a lot of information there. I really encourage you to apply as many of these tips as you can. Uh, they really will help if you work on them consistently. So just take one or two for now and just add the others later. But I'd love to know how you get on. So if you found these useful, please do like this video. Please leave a comment. And I do encourage you to subscribe to, uh, so you can receive future videos just like this one as well. And there's also a bell icon. So if you click on that, uh, that will mean that you'll get um, notified whenever I record a new video. And if you really like this video as well and you'd like to uh, receive some more information from me, I have a wonderful book that's completely free. It's called 10 Strategies for Your Success. And it really is the 10 commandments that I use on a daily basis to have a really successful, enjoyable and fulfilling life. It's a great read. It's not a long book. It's really easy to apply. So if you fancy that, if you think that's going to really help you, and I'm, I'm sure it will, there'll be a link below this video in the description where you can download that book. So I'd like to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed this video, hope you found it useful and I look forward to talking with you again soon. Bye for now.